Welcome to FightingGators.com. I'm Allison Banco, joined by Cody Jones. We're here at McKeithen Stadium, where we just finished talking to three Florida baseball players, one of which was Taylor Gushu. Cody, Taylor's got some big shoes to fill this year. Can you talk about his role on the team? Yeah, there's no doubt. You lose a guy like Mike Zanino, SEC Player of the Year as a sophomore, two-time All-American. Just a, a huge career for him, One of the most, or certainly the most decorated Florida baseball player ever. Um, so replacing him is not going to be easy. But Gushu obviously got uh, some experience last year, really kind of back and forth. The first half of, of his season was really good. He was kind of an impact bat at the plate for this team. He made a really big impression there. His defense was a little shaky behind the plate when he when he did catch some games to give uh, Zanino a break. Um, then the second half, he didn't really play a whole lot because he kind of fell into a little bit of a slump. Went into the summer, had kind of a down summer as well, had a much better fall. So I think that's the, that's the thing. They toyed the swing a little bit. It looks a lot better. It's a lot shorter now. Um, so I think that's what kind of makes him a little bit more comfortable this season. They, they changed his defense too. He's a lot more clean behind the plate. He has a lot better actions. He's, he, he's throwing the ball to second a lot better. I I think that's the big thing for him right now is, is if he would have played the defense he was last year, teams would be able to steal all over him. So he's, he's been a lot quicker back there and certainly looks a lot, a lot better than he did last season. Now, of course, Taylor got plenty of playing time last year, but one player who we talked to today was Zach Powers, who redshirted last year due to his shoulder injury. Cody, what do you think his role is going to be this year? Do you think he's going to see some time at third base? Yeah, that's kind of still to be determined. I think third base is probably the main spot for him, but they still haven't decided just yet. Just because, again, as we've talked about so many times, there's so many different moving parts on this team. He could play first base. He could probably even play outfield a little bit if they needed him to, but certainly they like having him back off that injury. Um, it was one obviously that forced him to redshirt last year, but just having his bat back in the lineup really gives them kind of a veteran presence in there, somebody that they trust. He's actually SEC. He made the SEC All Freshman Team at, at third base two years ago, so people kind of throw him, uh, forget about him a little bit. But he certainly has proven what he can do in this conference. All right, now as soon as one player enters, another leaves. Tyler Thompson, a big absence for this team. Do you think that anyone has secured the center field spot at this point? To be honest, I don't think anybody really, really will until conference play starts. I think that's the big thing for this team right now. There's going to be some of those moving parts. I think the, the main guy, as of right now at least, would probably be Harrison Bader, who's a really athletic freshman that they like out there quite a bit, a late addition to last year's recruiting class. But they like what he can do because he can run. He's, he's extremely fast, one of the fastest guys on the team, just a little young at the plate. I think that's the main thing that, that they kind of want him to work on a little bit. But there's no questions about his athleticism, about his defense. And I think he, certainly if he brings those, and then they're quite all right with it. Justin Schaefer is another guy. Got some time in the outfield last year, a good athlete, still learning the outfield. And he had some ups and downs last year with that. So I think that's what they're kind of waiting on a little bit to see if he can handle that position in center field. But again, they're going to mix and match a little bit in the non-conference schedule to try to have the best group out there for the postseason. Now, of course, the Gators have plenty of time to prepare for the opening day, which is on February 15th at home against Duke. In the meantime, keep it locked on FightingGators.com for all your Gator sports updates. I'm Allison Banco.